Hey everybody, it's Terry here from Blue Abroad and I have got Jake from Saints TV and we are here to really kick off a season 2022 footy talk because uh, I'm sure we've both had intra-club matches but uh, slowly but surely the real stuff starts. Jake, welcome again mate. Thanks mate. It's always good getting on a chat and nice early morning uh, chat with you Terry. So uh, yeah, it's it's a big game on Thursday. It's a could be a grand final preview, who knows, but uh, <laughs> getting a bit ahead of ourselves there, but it's good to just have footy back and uh, to talk about a game too is going to be awesome. 100%. I mean, we're in the, I mean, some may say that, you know, end of February, start of March is the hard part. I disagree. I think uh, December, January is the hard part because there's not much really going on, but you know that you miss the footy and the footy is the heartbeat of Melbourne in many respects. And I think, if anything, Melbourne and Victoria and maybe even Australia needs the footy just to give it a bit of a kickstart. So to have an actual, you know, practice match against another club and to see what we're doing and what you guys are doing, I think is um, is super exciting. Now, I guess my first question for you, and you might have the same one for me, is what's going on in the St. Kilda preseason? What's the, what's the narrative, the, the high-level narrative? Um, yeah, well, I mean, easy to talk about this year, but it kind of relates to last year and what we did wrong. And it's basically a complete flip on that. Um, I don't know how much the Carlton fans know about our preseason last year, probably not much, but, um, it was very much driven by like, kind of just focus on the game plan and the rest will take care of itself. And we didn't do too much actual fitness work you know we didn't get our fitness levels to the right level and that's why you found you know we we try and execute a game plan but we weren't even running two ways in the first 10 weeks last year so that's why we got blasted by Essendon we lost to Richmond to Melbourne we just looked slow we couldn't execute any game plan because we didn't have the legs and we've got a new um head of fitness, uh, Nick Walsh, who's come in. He was from GWS, I think, and he did some really good work there. Um, and he's basically, from the training sessions that I've been to and watched, he's been the only one in charge. Rats is kind of just sitting on the sidelines, and it's Nick Walsh getting the boys to do, like when I was there, it was you know, a good 16K session plus actual game plan stuff, simulation, kicking, marking, tackling. So it was a good blend, whereas last year was very much, from what I saw, not much running, gut running, match simulation is very much just kicking and uncontested stuff. And that's, you know, good to a point. But when you get to the real games, as we found, we couldn't handle the heat because we didn't practice in that sort of um, area. And this year we're doing that. So I'm hoping from round one this time we'll be a bit more prepared. That's a really interesting point. And that's, I guess, exactly why we're having this chat because that that's something I would never have assumed from the outside looking in. My perception mm. of the Saints is obviously the year before you play finals and you played finals with this Brett Ratton style, attacking, um, exciting, pretty jealous if I'm honest, to see the way you guys were playing in that year you made the finals. And I, I'd mm. never really thought of your fitness as being an issue. It just seemed that things were clicking, you're in the right place, right time, you're quick, dynamic, Um and then I don't know, I guess I guess fitness is the thing you've identified as what really was one of the breakdowns for you last year. So mm. you still so is is the confidence within the St. Kilda side of things, is the confidence in that, all right, we fix up our fitness, we've got confidence in our game style, and then once the two marry up, we're good to go. Uh, I think so. I think so. It was hard to judge us last year because we only played probably six games where we were kind of resembling the team of 2020. Mm. You know, even Butler wasn't the same. Hill had a slow start. We had injuries too, but I don't want to use that as an excuse anymore. If anything, I think that's a bit of a blessing because guys like Burns, Connolly, we got Sharman in mid-season draft, which was amazing, and he was very good in the intra-club the other day, and he looks like he's put on size. Um, and then getting our academy boys, I think in a way it's created that battle for spots now where the midfield's looking pretty tough to pick. Seb Ross is probably looking over his shoulder thinking Ryan right. Burns is doing pretty well, you know, and he is, you know, so I would not be surprised if Seb Ross is on the edge round one, round two, which is a big change. Um, and I guess people forget 2020, it was a shorter game too, you know. So fitness-wise, you mention it, True. shorter quarters. And we always kicked early goals 
and usually kind of almost coughed up some games in that season towards the end. And that was because we just got tired. But when there's full 30-minute quarters, you can't really hide from that. And we, we tried to play the same way. And it only took until the bye where we really shifted it and then got going. But, yeah, I think fitness is definitely priority. And then game plan, we're going to have some changes. Like Billings is going to play more forward. Gresham's going to start forward with Butler and Higgins and King and Membry. So there's going to be serious small power there. Um, but, yeah, one intra club in. So it's it's pretty hard to tell what sort of shift in the game plan we're, we're working with at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I um, that that's actually a really dynamic forward line you've listed there. Um, look, I've yeah. got a couple of favourite players from the Saints. Like I love, I love that boy up the top here, Jack Steele. Steely in your super yeah, coach team. I saw that. Yes, yes, he is. Uh, like, do not say a bad word about Jack Steele ever because he's just no. just goes about the right way. He's done the um, done the apprenticeship, you know, as a tagger, and now he's been let loose. Um, I had to listen. I haven't finished it yet at the time of filming this, but I had to listen to his interview with Dill Buckley for about Mm. 15 minutes. Um, Just, yeah, big fan of what what he's about. I guess from your point of view, I I won't be able to answer this question, but you will. Like, who are your, let's say, top three to five most important players in terms of if you lost them, it'd be so hard to replace them? Yeah. Uh, obviously, Steele would be one. Um, you could you could put Rowan Marshall and Paddy Ryder in the same category. They're both equally important, but Rowe's very important. Yep. Uh, Dougal Howard being our main fullback. We've only really got Dara Joyce. Um, and then on top of that, who else would there be? It'd be probably someone like... I think Higgins is pretty important. He's our best small. Um, I mean, for us, it's... I'm sick of talking about injuries, so I just want everyone to play so I don't have to worry about picking favorites. But those three or four would be the best. And even Kel Wilkie, because he's always good at playing that um, that medium-sized forward and he takes them on really well. But if he has to, he goes on the bigs. And if he has to, again, he goes on the smalls. So there's not yeah. many defenders in our squad that are as versatile as him. Yep. And lastly, someone like Jimmy Webster or Ben Patton. It's mainly backline players because that's where we struggle to get the depth. Anywhere that where there's a lack of depth, that's generally where your most important players are because you can't afford to lose them. Yep. Forward and mids, we're getting some luck with injuries so far. So there is, you know, you can replace a few players, but um, Dugs and Wilkie would be up there as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is your perception of the Carlton Football Club outside looking in? Obviously, we... Zach Teague, Hyavos, etc. What what's the the sentiment? You you know, feel free to be as honest as possible. We're we're into a new era where honesty is the policy, and we're here to take accountability. So, what what's the perception? Uh, look, I I don't I don't I don't know. I I think the perception um, from my end is very much dictated by the ridiculous media, and I don't know if internally you guys are the same, where it's like just let us get our plays in, let us. We haven't even played yet. Everyone's talking up finals. You know, let us just play. And I was like that in um, end of 2019 where we got Brad Hill, Jonesy, Dukes, Butler. Uh, we got all these players in and everyone's like, they're just going to go straight up the ladder. We didn't know. And then we lose the first game to North when we're up by five goals and it looks like we haven't improved at all. And it was all because of the media perception. Then they jump on your back when you lose one game. So it's my perception at the moment is from the media and I think it's, a bit silly to think Carlton are just going to play like make top eight just like that. It's not that easy. Other teams have to drop out for our teams to make it. You know, we didn't make it either. Um, So we need to have teams dropping out. We need to improve and win games against some good teams that we didn't last year. So if the players you bring in have bridged that much of a gap, sure. But like my angle on Carlton is I don't mind Carlton. I just don't like, how easily the media jump on the bandwagon uh, because for, I mean, for a Saints fan, we don't really get the media jumping on our bandwagon, even when we're winning. So it's like you draft one player, you get Cher in and then you're the darlings of the AFL. So it's just like, cool, good player. They did a few nice things. Good coach, good squad, got a lot of talent there. I know that, you know, probably more A graders than us. Absolutely. But, you know, like I always say, haven't yet put it together. So I'm not going to, 
say you're going to make finals, yeah, and I have to see how you go on Thursday and, and beyond that. But from outside looking in, I I think you've got the squad, but, yeah, that's that's as far as you can go at the moment. I don't know yeah. if you're the same and you're, like, optimistic about making finals. Uh, you would be, but you're not going to lock it in at, at the moment. I mean... Or is, he, you, is he locking well, it in? Well, I'm not... I wouldn't say I'm confident because... Uh, if you watch the interesting thing about Carlton fan media is it's now a genuine thing. We have mm. got, I don't know how it's like, how it is on the St. Kilda side of things, but we have got, man, I'm not even kidding. We probably have like 16 to 17 different podcasts run by fans. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So I, I sense from my point of view, you've got the mainstream media who use the club and the monogram because it's such a rich, proud, historical club. And they use that, because it creates excitement, buzz, um, energy. If it's a negative piece about the Carlton Football Club, everyone's going to want to read it because they love it. If it's a positive piece, well, you know the Carlton fans are going to be there in their droves to, to mm. read it. So I think the mainstream media are about to face a very interesting battle because if you watch the fan-made content, it's totally different to yeah. what the mainstream yeah. say. Like, we're, like I'm fed up. <laughs> I've had enough of uh, what we've been dishing out for the last couple of years. It's just, it's not good enough. Like last year was not good enough. Everyone within the club would feel the same. That's why we did an external review. That's why we hired a new coaching mm. group. And that's why we've done what we've done. So am I confident that we're going to play finals this year? No, I'm not confident because they're, what's there to be confident of? We haven't done it yet. Um, am I hopeful like, does it make sense to me logically that, you know, seven years into the rebuild, these players are now old enough and mature enough to take that next step? Yeah, in theory, in my mind, it makes sense, but it doesn't work like that in reality until you do it. And so mm -hmm. I'm, um, I've probably been guilty in the past of selling the dream and like drinking the Kool-Aid and just thinking, oh, all right, well, we did the rebuild, so it's going to come good. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy to me because I really, I mean, maybe you can, put me into line. I feel like we have the best young spine in the league uh, with Weedering, Walsh, Harry Mackay, and you sprinkle in Cripps there. I think that the four of them as a, you know, mm. I just think if it's not the best young spine in the league, it, it's one of, and, you know, all these beautiful names and, you know, all Australian players that are in there doesn't mean much. And I think you guys are a really good example of why not having nine or 10 A graders is, um, is necessarily the be all and end all because you, definitely play a team game. You've got a lot of players on your list that I don't really know about, if I'm honest, but you play a role. Mm. Yeah, I, I I love it. I It gets tiring when I um hear people, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, Saints could make top eight, but they've only got Jack Steele. It's like, it's not Jack Steele versus the team. It's mm. 22 on 22. It's the whole club against another club, you know? Um, it gets tiring and like even the... um. Was it the champion data stuff that came out last week? I think Carlton had maybe four or five. Did you have how many? Um, well, it was, it was. Did you have? It was Stard Williams and someone else that wasn't. No Weider Walsh was there. No, no Walsh. It was yeah, a see, and week. we didn't have Steele. They just had Sinclair there. Yeah. You know, that's how much people know about some of the clubs. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I agree in that. I think that's probably. It's like a strength and a weakness for us having no stars or one star, really. But we've got the potential to fast track that and suddenly have three or four in a year, which people yep. don't look at. Like yep. Gresham's played only 12 games in two years. He's only 24. He's a very good forward. He's a very good mid. He could easily be A grade. Um, you know, you've got someone like Jack Higgins, Max King. There's another two there already. Uh, there's there's Rowan Marshall could be an A grade ruck. Um, for sure, for sure. And then there's unproven players like Sharman that has come in and he looks really good and natural, but give him a couple of years, you don't know where he's going to be. So there's, for me, it's, I don't, I don't always get excited about our, you know, our best 22. It's very much what's to come in the next two to three years, like Burns, Connolly, Sharman, Marshall, these sort of guys as well that are yet to, to hit their peak. And I think that's probably where most, um, like, of the analysts kind of assess our squad is that, We've got Steele and then there's a big bulk of like pretty good players. Some of them could become stars or they couldn't, you know, or they may not. So that's kind of where St. Kilda is at the moment. If they take the next step, like Hunter Clark, for example, if he takes the next step, does the club take the next step? You know, we don't know yet. So 
we're kind of hoping on these sort of guys to have a big year. Yeah. Well, let's talk a bit about some of the players that you're expecting to have a big year from. Like you, you mentioned, you know, the, you know, the big names in terms of Steele, King and Marshall, and like I'm very well versed in who they are. But uh, maybe for the listeners on uh, on this side of things, who are some of the names? You mentioned Cooper Sharma, but who are some of the names mm-hmm. that uh, we may not be talking so much about right now, but by the end of the season, they might uh, take that next step? Who, who are you guys looking at from your end? Uh, I mean, I know um, I'm expecting Ryan Burns to have a massive year. I've already mentioned him a few times, but um, when you watch him, like there was a passage even in the intra club where he was at a contest, got the ball, handled it off. Zach Jones went straight into him on the boundary line, like completely poleaxed him. And even jo- uh, Jonesy looked a bit sore. Burns, he just got straight back up, went straight to the next contest, hit the hit the ball hard, got hit again and kept going. And that's the sort of, player that he's turning into he's got elite endurance he doesn't stop running um and he's very good kick and i think he's only probably 2021 um but and also very good overhead so there's for a guy his size he's he plays bigger than that and i really like guys like that kind of reminds me of when i used to when i used to play footy it's like you got to play bigger than you are you're not gonna you're not that big you know so he makes do with what he's got um and i think he's the player that's looking at someone like seb ross and thinking mate if you don't play a good couple of weeks, if he's not in the team already, that is, he's going to come knocking and, and potentially take that midfield spot because he can play on the wing, play in the middle. It doesn't really matter. Um, on top of that, someone like Ben Patton, who we missed dearly last year, um, he was our best back pocket in 2020. He was one of the big reasons why we kind of took that step forward and beat a lot of good teams with a lot of good smalls was, was Pato. And he broke his leg in, you know, pretty unlucky circumstances, roughly yeah. tackling him in, in training and doing it. Um, and then probably oh, the one I'm most optimistic about would have to be Cooper Sharman. Would have to be Cooper Sharman. I mean, his last four weeks were just crazy. Like he has four or five kicks a game. He's kicking three goals. He's a light frame, but he's... He's kind of like Gunston in a way. You can kind of liken him to that where he's not the biggest body, but he gets into the right spots and it's not a big numbers game for him. He'll probably have six, seven disposals, but he may kick two or three goals a week. Um, And I think he kind of supports Kingy pretty well um, and takes that pressure off him to kick big bags every week. So those would be the the main three, I reckon, that I'm, I'm pretty keen on. Love it. That's great to know. They might, they might come in handy for the, um, the fantasy heads out there as well. Sounds like you've, you've named Sharman could people. be a bargain. I don't know what his yeah. pricing would be on Super Coach, but could be a good get. Yeah, I love that. Um, well, mate, listen, it's been great to chat with you. I'm uh, hoping we get to do it again when the real stuff happens. We can, um, I don't know, I guess there'll be a bit more meat to the season next time we there chat. There would be, yeah. Right now it's <laughs> like uh, based on what training and, and an intra club where they, you don't know how hard they're really going. So. Yeah, exactly right. Well, uh, Thursday morning, 10 a.m. Are you going to be there? I am going to be there. Are you going to be there? I'll be there, mate. mate be yeah, there. all the Carlton home. fans are going to get out. Big crowd. Yeah, you, should come, you should come and stand next to us. Next to us. Come Where and, are you uh, going to be? I'll get amongst it. Mate, I'll be wherever the vibes are at. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope it's uh, not like a few years back when Brucey kicked six. Uh, well, we hope not. Uh, thanks for the reminder. I think. Uh, uh, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, looking forward to it, mate. Um Good luck for the for the season for the Saints and, and obviously for the channel as well. Um, we're just out Easy, here mate. trailblazing the path for the next generation, mate. It's been a it's been a pleasure to watch your growth and 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 on your side and looking forward to just etching a few more memories in this internet world. Absolutely, mate. Thanks for the chat and yeah, good luck Thursday and for the year as well.